Hello, I'm Sean McLaren. In this video, we're going to look at zero touch deployment of Surface devices with Windows Autopilot. We'll dig deep into the security behind deploying and managing devices with the cloud. And to do this, we'll look at the Autopilot process all the way from device manufacturing and procurement to the first press of the power button and into steady use and management of those devices. Let's start with a quick review of Windows Autopilot. So powered by core services like Azure Active Directory, Microsoft Endpoint Manager, and the Windows deployment surfaces, Windows Autopilot streamlines deployment by allowing IT administrators to dynamically provision a direct ship device. When a Surface device is purchased, either Microsoft or one of our device resellers can register the device as a corporate owned Autopilot device. This registration is done via Partner Center through a set of automated APIs so there's no access into your endpoint manager tenant directly. That device registration information is then synced over to your tenant via the Windows deployment service. Once a device is registered, a disabled Azure Active Directory object is created. This device registration then allows an IT admin to create the autopilot configuration for that device. They can configure security and other device settings and policies, application deployments for M365 apps and any needed line of business applications. They can even create software update policies to keep the device up to date and compliant. With Surface devices, we can even configure firmware management and control settings like the ability to boot the device from a USB stick. In addition to device configurations, admins can also configure things like conditional access policies and advanced security protections for identity and even data protections for this device. Now this allows the device to be directly shipped from the reseller to the employee. We eliminate the need for extra shipping steps or re-imaging the device. This saves both time and money and is perfect for today's workforce of hybrid and remote employees. The employee is then able to simply log in with their corporate credentials and trigger this dynamic provisioning process where we can uplift the device to Windows Enterprise, apply our policies and configurations, install our applications, and have the device ready for work in a matter of minutes. The best part is this can be done from anywhere with an internet connection. It could even be done using a device's built-in cellular capabilities like the Surface Pro X LTE. One of the top questions I get asked about is the security of the device going through a deployment like this. Now, concerns range from not re-imaging the device with a gold image, or even allowing the device to connect to a home or coffee shop network during this process. To tackle these questions, I'd like to go deeper into the security aspects that surround this. And to do that, I've invited Bob Combs, a security PM on our Surface Engineering team, to join us and walk us through some of the key security topics, giving you a peek into how we think about security when building Surface and how the hardware and software work together to create these secure device experiences. Bob, thank you for joining us today and helping us to dive in here. Thanks, Sean. It's my pleasure to join you today. Bob, in the past, we've talked about why securing and managing firmware is so important, as well as the other aspects and pieces of this secure chain we are trying to create. Can you help us understand how, especially now in this world of hybrid and remote work, we should be thinking about maybe device security a little differently, our firmware and our hardware choices. Sure, Sean, it's no secret that attacks against firmware have been increasing in recent years. A state-sponsored attacker, Fancy Bear, had targeted device firmware a couple of years ago. Own the device's firmware and you own the device and its secrets. Compromised firmware can result in spoofing an OS or virtual machines. Malware can run in the background to wipe the OS or install its own apps. The exploit may be as simple as, comp as a compromised certificate or to the more complex adding of option ROM code to your firmware. A recent study reported that 80% of enterprises had experienced at least one firmware attack in the last two years. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, has a database that shows attacks against firmware have increased 500% over the last four years. Surface devices and firmware are secured because of several steps that we've taken. Our UFI is the only UFI currently built on the Microsoft Project MU, an open source code base, which is based on the UFI.org open source. 
Of course, there are customizations specific to each Surface product, but my point is that the code is widely scrutinized. All of the firmware Surface uses has been reviewed and built by our engineers. No third-party BIOS vendors are involved. This is a strong part of how we protect against supply chain attacks for Surface products. We have reduced the attack surface in our UV by removing any unused code, including any system management mode functions that our devices do not need. Another unique point is that Surface firmware is securely updated via Windows Update. Surface devices are kept current and secure, and because Surface builds the firmware, we can agilely respond to threats. Wow, so our device security really starts long before we ever even get the device. It's nice to know that Surface is engineering for security right from the start. So once I direct ship a device to employees, can you walk us through what it means to have this chain of trust we keep hearing about? Sure. Security must live in all layers of the ecosystem in which a device exists. Security starts with conscious engineering and follows through all stages of manufacturing, including secure supply chain protection, and best practices throughout. When a Surface device is built, the factory registers the device's serial number and a protected key for autopilot. The IT admin for the purchasing enterprise configures device profiles in Intune and then assigns the profiles to new or existing devices. Surface devices provide the highest levels of security, security fit for enterprise, at home connecting to an enterprise, or protecting your family. Security starts with a Microsoft root of trust in Surface at the chip level and is verified at each stage of boot. Let me walk you through that. Security is instantiated every time the power button is pressed from a root of trust provided by the trusted platform module, TPM chip. The TPM is the industry standard security safe where secrets are kept. Upon power, the SOC first validates its own firmware using its internal SOC vendor's key. Next, the SOC uses the OEM key, which is securely held within the SOC to validate the first unified extensible firmware interface UFI stage. The SOC verifies both the signature of the first UFI stage, as well as compares the measurement across the first stage firmware with the measurement recorded within the TPM. The first UFI stage is the pre-EFI, PEI stage, responsible for checking security and initializing UFI for the next stage. The UFI PEI stage then verifies the signature and measurement of the next stage of UFI, the driver extension or Dixie. The second stage has drivers and logic for selecting and booting a drive. The UFI Dixie stage verifies the signature of the bootloader, which for Windows is WinLoad. WinLoad checks the signatures on the Windows modules that it loads. Starting a new device will begin with the familiar out-of-box experience, UBI. Whether automated or manual, UBI configures the OS for the user. One of the early steps is to connect to the internet. After being connected to the internet, UBI will send a device hardware hash to Intune. Intune uses this information to verify that the device is an expected member of the customer's enterprise and has a profile assigned to it. Intune will download the profile, configuration, and even apps to the device. Configuration information sets specific variables in UFI via the Device Firmware Configuration Interface, or DFCI. Surface devices have a rich set of DFCI configuration options available that can be set via Intune. The device configuration settings are locked such that the local user cannot access or override them. So we've talked about being able to manage our firmware from the cloud with Endpoint Manager, and we can leverage DFCI for that. That's right. DFCI is an open API that Surface uses to pass management commands from Intune in the cloud to UFI. An example of what DFCI can do is to disable a device such as a USB port or camera. The disable gates the power off to that physical component and locks it in UFI to pre prevent the OS from ever changing the disable. The component itself is removed from the device ACPI table by UFI, so the OS never even sees the port. The port no longer exists. And that's just one example of DFCI. There are many DFCI settings. So that's great. I love the fact that the device is not even present to Windows. 
Now, as an IT admin, I can do things like disable boot from USB directly from Endpoint Manager without ever needing to physically touch the device. Yep. Then Ubi boots to the operating system. I won't go into the myriad protections that Windows provides, but we'll mention that Windows provides the highest security experiences, guarding the OS itself, the user's identity, user's data, and applications. That's right, Bob. We all know the end goal is to protect our corporate devices and the identities and the data that reside on them. Now, as Bob mentioned, when our device goes through the UBI process, it is now connected to a network. And in addition to pulling down those DFCI settings to manage our firmware, we have joined the device to Azure Active Directory and rolled it into full MDM management. And as an IT admin, I'm even able to configure that out of the box experience for things like turning off the end user licensing agreement and privacy settings, since I know I'll just apply policies for those. This is also where, again, we leverage our hardware for things like passwordless sign-on with Windows Hello for Business or BitLocker for protecting our corporate data on those devices, both of which use our TPM 2.0 chip inside the device. Once our policies are being applied during autopilot, I can move into full device management and manage the device throughout its entire life cycle. And as Bob mentioned, there are lots of great protections built into Windows. First and foremost, we want to set our software update policies to ensure that we always have the latest protections from Windows Update and our devices are current and healthy. And this includes keeping our firmware and drivers up to date for all the reasons Bob mentioned. Luckily for us, Surface has all of those drivers and firmware on Windows Update. With Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, we have complete protections as well as full detection and response capabilities built into Windows. Again, using a combination of hardware and software protections, leveraging virtualization-based security, we can use things like System Guard and Exploit Guard to help protect our device and protect from unwanted code execution. We can use Application Guard to provide secure application containers and prevent system access from malicious applications. And we can use Credential Guard to protect our identities. Now, speaking of our identities, one of the great things about our Surface devices is the ability to use Windows Hello for seamless passwordless logon on every one of our devices. Adding additional security and controls from Microsoft 365, such as Defender for Identity or conditional access policies, which help ensure that only compliant and healthy devices are connecting to corporate resources, and that dynamic policy assessment for risk-based mitigations, and then even things like smart screen to help protect our browsing sessions, we really can create this chip to cloud security experience and support a zero trust security model with Surface devices. Cloud services don't just provide strong management. When a Surface device is provisioned through the cloud using autopilot, and Microsoft Endpoint Manager, we have Microsoft 365 services like OneDrive, OneDrive Vault, Azure Active Directory, and our core productivity services such as Teams, SharePoint, and Exchange. In combination with things like Microsoft 365 Compliance and Microsoft Defender, we really combine all of these capabilities with the device itself to provide the security that we need in today's hybrid work environment. We do this providing the best user experience and a great IT pro experience as well. That's right, Sean. And Surface firmware is kept current with the latest UFI open source Project Mu. It is maintained by our engineers and verified secure to guard against supply chain attacks. It has re a reduced attack service and other strong protection. It can be updated agilely as needed via Windows Update and Surface devices have a strong root of trust via the SOC and TPM to ensure a secured boot chain. Thanks, Bob. This is great information, and I appreciate taking a look at it from the security angle. So building on this great hardware root of trust, we're able to direct ship the device to our employees, deploy with Windows Autopilot, and have confidence in the security and the protections that are in place. Leveraging the power of the cloud, along with our capabilities built into Windows 11, on a Surface device, we bring the best of our hardware from a security and productivity perspective together with the best from Windows. I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for taking a look at zero touch provisioning from a slightly different angle. With every Microsoft Surface, we strive to deliver the best experiences and the highest levels of security. 
while ensuring our IT pros have the tools that they need to do this in ways that make it easier to provision and manage devices and delight their users. Thank you again.